Uh, Bjorn Lomborg, please, Bjorn, take it, take it away. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and it's an important discussion. Human nature is a funny thing. We don't seem to be able to take anything seriously unless we add in a superlative. It's not enough that things are good. They have to be the best thing ever since sliced bread. Or if it's going to be really bad, it has to be really, really bad. It has to be the worst thing ever. Look at the proposition that we have in front of us tonight. We're being asked to look at, is this the defining crisis for mankind? Elizabeth was trying to downplay it a little bit, but she also said, this is the top priority. And of course, that matters. If it was just about, is this an important issue? I think we would all agree and we could go home. This is the question, is this the most important thing? And this escalation of rhetoric is not just stylistic. It forces us back to the very essence of a dichotomy. You're either for us or you're against us. You either believe that global warming is the worst thing ever to befall mankind or you're an enemy of humankind. I think this kind of approach is fundamentally unsound and it actually leads to a really, really poor way of helping both the world and global warming. Let me try to ex elaborate on that. First of all, is global warming really mankind's defining crisis? There's three billion people that live on extreme poverty. There's 2.4 billion people that don't have access to clean energy. There's a billion people that will tonight go to bed hungry. There's three billion people that don't have access to clean energy, sorry, uh, to clean drinking water and sanitation. To this year, 15 million people, a quarter of everyone who dies in this world, will die from easily curable infectious diseases. Is global warming really the only and top priority? I don't think so. Fundamentally, we've asked some of the world's top economists, I've asked uh, uh, together with a number of other people uh, in something we call the Copenhagen Consensus, where can you actually do the most good for the world? I think we all want, all four of us up here, want to do good for the world. It's not our intentions we're discussing, it's the actions that we actually try to get to. These economists looked at all the different problems in the world and told us, where can we do the most good? They told us it was about investing in micronutrient malnutrition. It was about investing in agricultural research and development, in immunization of easily curable infectious diseases, about schooling of girls. These are all pretty boring stuff, but it's incredibly important to make sure that we live in a better world. And saying that this, that global warming is the defining crisis of mankind is cheapening all these other problems. But it doesn't mean we shouldn't fix climate change. Of course we should. Climate change is real. It's an important problem. But I would also argue that fo focusing so much on global warming and claiming it's the defining issue of mankind neglects that we need to be smarter about global warming. Elizabeth said in a somewhat offended manner that we have listened to all the evidence from the scientists for so long, but we don't have the political will to actually carry through. That's true. But maybe we should then start thinking about, maybe it's because we're barking up the wrong tree. Maybe it's because we're doing this all wrong. And I would argue to a very large extent, we're doing it all wrong because we believe this is the defining crisis of mankind. And as long as we do that, we're likely to say, so we've got to throw everything overboard and we've just got to focus on this, cut carbon emissions dramatically for, uh, uh, in the rich world right now. But the costs are phenomenal. The economists tell us the cost of doing that to keep to the two degrees centigrade limit that many uh, nations, the EU obviously, uh, the most uh, uh, preponderant of those, have signed up to will cost, by the end of the century, some $40 trillion a year. $40 trillion. The net benefit will be to avoid climate damages of about $3 trillion. Essentially, we're buying a cure that's much, much more costly than the ailment. Of course, we're having a hard time to get nations to sign on board. That's essentially because we're saying this is the worst crisis ever to face mankind. We got to reel back. And these economists also told us what we can do. They told us this is about investing in research and development into green energy technologies. This is about making sure that future technology becomes so cheap that everybody wants to buy it. 
We might put up solar panels right now, rich, well-meaning people will put them up you know, to show how good people they are, but fundamentally it's not going to matter to global warming. Only once we have made sure that solar panels and all the other technologies are so cheap that we can get everybody to buy them, also the Chinese and the Indians, then we will have solved global warming. That's about investing in research and development. So I would argue, actually, that the problem that we have in front of us is twofold because we're so singularly focused on global warming, we forget and cheapen all the other problems of this world. And because we're so singularly focused on this being the most important problem and we've got to throw everything out and we've just got to go for it, we end up making really, really poor policy decisions. So I would agree with Elizabeth. We really do need a different approach. We need to stop talking about just cuts, cuts, cuts. We did that for 20 years. We promised cuts in Rio in 1992, we didn't deliver. We promised cuts in, in Kyoto in 1997, we didn't deliver. We promised them even higher, and we didn't deliver even more. And now we're going to Copenhagen and promise even grander gestures. If this is going to be anything than just another time with confetti and champagne to go around, but not actually doing anything, if we're going to do more than waste another 10 years not doing anything about global warming, we've got to start being smart. Global warming is a problem. It's definitely one of the things we need to fix of the 21st century. But we have many problems we need to fix, and we need to fix global warming smartly. So I would suggest to you that you should vote no to this resolution, not because you don't want to do good, but exactly because you want to do the most good possible. You want to recognize that we should fix climate change but you want to recognize that we should fix it smartly. And you want to recognize that global warming, while important and certainly a challenge we need to fix, is by no means the only challenge we need to fix in this century. I commend you to vote no to this resolution. Thank you. Very, very good. And I commend uh, you, Bjorn. You landed that just perfectly, right on seven minutes. So well done. <laughs>